Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. And in this next video, what we gotta do is calculate the length of each of these line segments. These here represent the endpoints of the line segments. Now, just in general, as a quick review, if we have two endpoints of a line segment, x1, y1, and then we have x2, y2, what's the length of this line segment gonna be? Well, it's gonna be the square root of the difference in the x value squared plus the difference in the y values squared. All right, so this is the formula we're gonna be using throughout the video. And so you just gotta be really careful in plugging these in and doing the algebra. So let's label these. It actually doesn't matter whether you label this x1, y1 or x2, y2 you're still gonna get the same answer in the end. So let's, uh, let's rewrite the formula over here, just the general one. So we'll have the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So let's plug everything in here. So we got x2, which is five, minus x1, so be careful here as you're subtracting a negative like that, and then you're gonna square that, and then you're gonna have y2, which is negative one, minus y1, which is three, and then you're gonna be squaring that right there. So what happens here, we got the square root, work with the bracket first, five minus negative four is like five plus four, which gives us nine, that's gonna be squared plus, Negative one minus three gives us negative four, and that's gonna be squared. Now, just as a heads up, these are always gonna to turn to a positive because you're squaring them. Or they could be zero as well, but they can't be negative. So notice that this here is gonna be 81. Negative four to the power of two. Negative four times negative four gives us 16. And so we'd end up with the square root over here of 90. Seven. And if you want to get the decimal of that, that's going to be 9.85 if you plug that in to your calculator. Right, so that's the length of the line segment in part A. Now what about part B? So in part B, let's uh, first label these. We have x1, y1, we got x2, y2. So we'd have what the square root of x2 minus x1, then we got y2 minus y1, like that. So what would we get here? We would have two minus negative three is like two plus three, which gives us five. One minus negative two is like one plus two, which gives us three. So this would be 25 plus nine, which would give us 34. Square root of 34 would be approximately 5.83. So sometimes you'll see solutions given in this format as an exact value. Sometimes they'll be in decimals, right? If you wanna get the decimal, just plug it into the calculator, right? So that's the length of the line segment for part B. Now part C, it's going to be it's gonna be a lot more algebra involved. So let me actually, I'll write C over here, just to give myself some room in case we need it, because we're working with fractions here, so you gotta be really careful with the algebra. So let's label these. This would be x1, y1. This would be x2, y2. So before plugging it into the formula, let's actually just deal with each step separately, just because we're working with fractions here. So we'll have, let's do the bracket x2 minus x1 first. So that would be negative five over eight minus three over four. Common denominator between these would be eight. So multiply this by two, multiply this by two. So we'd have negative five over eight minus six over eight, which would give us negative 11 over eight. So that's the x2 minus x1. 
right? But now notice that we have to square it. So what would that give us? Sorry, it would be x2 minus x1 squared. So if we do that, we know x2 minus x1 is negative 11 over 8. Now if we square it, whenever we square a fraction, it's like we can just in general, if we have like a over b to the power of x, we could take the numerator to the power of x and the denominator to the power of x. That's an exponential rule right there. So we could take negative 11, square it, and then we could take 8 and square it, which would give us 121, positive 121, over 64, right? So this portion here would end up being that. So I suggest that when you're getting fractions like this, doing it in steps. So this here would be, this whole thing ends up being 121 over 64. Now, what if we do the exact same thing, but with the y values? So let's start with y2 minus y1. That would be negative 3 over 4 minus um, 1 over 2, right? y2 minus y1. So this would be common denominator would be 4. So multiply this by 2, multiply that by 2. So it would be negative 3 over 4 minus 2 over 4, which would give us negative 5 over four, like that. So the y2 minus y1 ends up being negative five over four. Now, what if we take y2 minus y1, square it, it would be negative five over four squared. So then we could take the negative five to the power of two, we could take the four to the power of two, which would give us 25 over 16, like that. So this whole portion ends up being 25 over 16. So you could see how much nicer it is to do it on the side because imagine we were doing all this work for both of them within there, it could start getting messy and then it allows you to nicely go back and check any mistakes that you made. Now from here, um, we just gotta add these fractions. So common denominator would actually be 64 because we can multiply this by four multiply that by four, so we'd have the square root of 121 over 64 plus 100 over 64, which would give us the square root of 221 over 64, like that. And if you wanted to get the decimal, plug that in to your calculator. Just when you're square rooting this, make sure that you put that in brackets. Or you could just take this and divide it by that and get a decimal, I think it'll be like around 3.4 something, and then square root that number to get 1.86. Right, so that right there ends up being the length of this line segment, a line segment with these endpoints. So if you get fractions like this, just be careful with your algebra. I recommend splitting it up into steps like that.